here we are, there's Mr. Bruce in the control room and down here is the nightmare. Well, it doesn't look big on here. You can mark my words. It's bigger than a jalapeno cherry. <laughs> Whatever that is. Whatever one that is. <laughs> yeah, control room. Started on the network. Let's go in there. Just while we're doing nothing. Yeah. The now, no, not you. The inf infamous door. <laughs> See it sideways. Yeah, and all the gear started to come in here. However, it's got a long way to go. So what we're going to do, me and Mr. Allen, we're going to build this this nightmare of a what do they call it? Studio desk. Yeah, and now. we'll be back. Yeah. And this is some of the gear that we bought to install. There's piles of it. But well, we're still on that. Yes, the dreaded desk. Next time you see us, well, we'll have a desk, won't we, Al? In yeah, in theory. So, here it is, the desk. Now, you might say that it's half assembled because we've got, along with Mr. Bruce here, there he is, all that stuff in the corner. And all this stuff down here. Yeah, the only problem is, we're not going to use that, are we? No, no we're not going to use that because we've got other things to do. There's the desk. It just about fits, well, how would you describe it? Nice. Almost snugly. Nice. Yeah. That's a good word. Yeah. Nice. So we're going to move on to the racks. We've got two racks that fit on the top, assuming they fit each side of the desk, which hasn't been tested. And I'll be back. That's the best I can say. Now, this is one of the two racks. There's a second one that I, uh, I bought for the studio. So we're going to assemble it and I'll show you in a minute. Okay, okay. You can see we've got the top bit on. The bit we were going to throw away. Well, we're not throwing it away because if you've got two 19-inch racks, which we had, and you've got the desk, which is a Cresonus Studio, what is it? 32. 32. Yeah. Then you've got a bit of a problem because it doesn't fit between the two 19-inch racks. However, with the centre console bodged around a little bit and remember to have them two black things on under the sides it's all going to work and we've got a little bit of strengthening to do in the center which i'll show you later we've also fitted yes a rack drawer so that we can hide the crap out of the way so nobody can see how bad we really are yeah i'll be back soon with more now then, now then, what we've got is an SRL solid rack light. And you believe it or not, it lights up a rack. And <laughs> at this side, we've got a dimmer. Scared away at the other side, Mr. Bruce will show you, yeah, that it's got a multicolor light, yeah. And it fits on your rack. Show us how it fits, Al. There you go. Fits on your rack, you can't, you can't see much of that, and shines down over all the equipment that you might not have. So don't worry about it, that's what we're going to do, and we'll see you later. And here's one of them T racks things we fitted for the power. This will handle up to about 10 amps and uh, basically eight uh, different devices. So there it is in, there it is on, and it even has little lights there, but we're not worried about the little lights. You can see we're reaching 235 volts. It's going up and down a little bit. Well, that's how it is. Anyway, it's been installed. And what more can you ask for? And by the way, there's the plug that I had to fit because Toman didn't supply a converter. Pain in the neck. And here's another little piece. This is a Millennium PB16XLR in and out that we're going to use, hopefully, probably, likely, as a patch bay. That makes sense too. Doesn't it? Does it? Yeah. Yeah, it does. Okay, moving along a little bit, we've now got the uneven tied H7600, and while it's discontinued in lieu of the six or seven thousand pound replacement, this one, well, you might not tell much difference really, or you might. Depends on an opinion. I'll tell you where you would save a difference. In your bank account. So we <laughs> we decided to keep this one. Oh, let's turn it on. It might even light up. Oh, I fancy that. It does. Even tied the next step. Well, 
It would be if I didn't want to spend 7,000... <laughs> it would be if, if I was going to spend 7,000 quid, or whatever it is. But I'm afraid I'm not going to do that. We're going to sit with this one and carry on fitting all my obsolete old equipment, as this is, uh, and make some great records with it and music. Yeah, that's, that's how it is. Problems found during startup. Setup info. Uh, press any key. Well, yeah, yeah, it probably wants a battery or something, it's but it looks like it's worked. Yeah. It's not linked to anything. That's a good point, Mr. There's Mr. Bruce, by the way. You keep seeing him. Yeah. He's yeah. everywhere. Yeah. yeah, he's a trainee, I like think. A bad crash. Yeah, he keeps coming back. <laughs> anyway, that's it for now. We're going to carry on and fit some more. Oh, lo and behold, we've got. A PreSona Studio 192, and it says here, High Performance Recording System. If only. <laughs> well, maybe it is. Let's turn it on, see if it comes on. Oh, so good so far. That's another one that's sort of waking up, and yeah, looks like that works. Okay, well, on and up. Well, moving on a little bit. We've gone back in history here. This is a TC Helicon Voice Pro. One of the originals, and it cost the earth at the time. I didn't buy it new, thankfully, uh, but I've still got it. And I thought it'll fill a space. And Alan says, oh, I'll be able to have a go with that. I think it'll help him. <laughs> what do you think, Al? I think it will. He thinks it will too. Now, it might work. Let's see if I can turn the thing on. Is it going to come on? Well, actually, Al. Have I plugged it into the right? Yeah, there we go. Oh, oh yeah. Fancy that. My God, it lights up. <laughs> you can see it's a bit slow, but don't hold that against it. Reminds me of the missus somehow. I don't know. Anyway, we'll be back. We've got loads more to work on in this, uh, this rack. And that, my friends, concludes the first part of the uh, the rebuild. Yeah, so we've got one side in place, and of course, the other side's coming up any time soon. But we'll see about that in a little while. Okay, well, here's the desk so far. We put the PC down there. Put the Mackie above it, if you can see that. No particular reason, except it's got a bit of a space. Got a monitor on the top. The shelf is going to have some more reinforcing across the back by way of metal. And we did do another change down here that uh, flipped around the Eventide and the uh, Presonus 192. Yeah, just to make the cables easier to get at. So that's where we're at up to now. There's a lot to go, and the cabling isn't st even started yet. So I need a, a rack for in there, and then we can start getting the, uh, the other technical stuff together. That's it for now. Isn't it, Mr. Bruce? It is. Okay, well, there's a change of plan here, and the change of plan is that top tray is going, that top shelf's going, and so is the monitor. It's going to go back on the wall. And uh, then we can get some other things going. I'll show you like what. Yeah. Something going like these. The uh, Studio Live Series 3 shelf mount. And there's three of them, so they don't fit underneath the shelf. Yeah. <laughs> the shelf mount doesn't fit underneath the shelf. What a story. I'm going to go and do some of that work now. Such as fitting that rack down there. What a nightmare. It's got to go up here. Isn't that exciting? Yeah, not. I'll see you soon. And here I am in the throes of testing the network. There are two connections on this. Uh, the first one will be for AVB data, and the second one will be for regular network type of stuff. So there you go. Unless things change, and then there'll be something else. <laughs> More on this. And on this one, I'm using... Uh, a Millennium MCT20. It's not the best in the world, but it does work. And it's particularly useful for, well, virtually every type of connection. They're not the highest uh, quality in the world, but what do you want for your £20, give or take? 
and uh, I, I shipped it on other gear so there was no shipping involved really and it's up there where the two connections come in and this is the network box that'll have a pile of different stuff in it okay well this is what happens when you fit a rack <laughs> and here's the problem the back of the rack is solid so I couldn't get these two in there so unfortunately they're going in the bottom but it doesn't really make much difference but I was trying to make it nicer, you know, and uh, that's one of the snags that you'll come across. Uh, just no doubt, no doubt at all. Okay, so the rack's coming along quite nicely. There's no cabling in there as yet, but don't worry about that. Who cares about cabling? <laughs> yeah, that's what we've got in there. Yeah, not a lot, but enough. This outer part. Not a lot, but enough for this outer section. Let's go and have a look at the desk while I've been doing all that. I know, I know, looking down there at the desk, you can see the Mackie, it's been lowered down a little bit. There's a light now up in the top, multicoloured indeed. <laughs> and uh, we've got a bit of a gap there, and then, as I said, the Mackie SDR24. It's a very old uh, recorder. But the fact is, it's been... Uh, it's been an awesome piece of gear for me over the years. I haven't used it in a while, but I'm going to uh, with this setup. Let me take you around the back and show you how. What I have here is a Motu LP32. I've had it a little while now, uh, but it's all interesting stuff. Let's have a look around the back. Now, very nicely around the back, you can see here that it's got an AVB. It's also got eight uh, light pipe or Call them what you will. Uh, in and out. I'm using six of them. Maybe not. Let's see if I can get it a bit lighter. Yeah. You can see in there where the IOs are coming from the Mackie. Come straight back into the back of this. And uh, what will happen is the IO will go in and out of this AVB here. It's all gone. Anyway, more of that later. Here's a quick overview of the front of the desk at the moment. Uh, well, you can see we fitted the iPad type of holders. Well, they're not iPads, they're Samsungs in this case. The Mackies won't be staying like they are. They're going to be changed. So before anybody says, oh, you can't put them there, trust me, I can, because I'm going to move them. I've also got uh, the LP32 down there now. Definitely... Uh, a good place to be yeah the Mac is a bit old and decrepit but that's like me <laughs> I guess it reminds me of me uh, up there we've got the network stuff going on and back in the other room if I was to flip across quickly you can see the networking's coming along nicely up there the rest of the place is currently full of gear and all sorts of stuff you can see it's all over the show and as for the old studio wow that's like a tip but that's going to be changed as well uh, we're all going to get to grips with that anyway that's enough for now keep watching i do want to thank microsoft for taking my xeon dual processor machine uh with it, all its memory and all the rest of it and writing it off within three years what a bunch of characters they are. Hey? Yeah. Well, maybe it'll stay on Windows 10. Then maybe it'll, it'll move to something else. But I can't do with a company that writes my equipment off because they don't like it. Unbelievable. And lastly, before I carry on, there's a PreSonus Monitor Station V2 and an iLock dongle because I smashed the old one on my way through. Fancy that. Yeah, so that's uh, that's going to be the uh, the monitor station uh, for messing around to speakers or whatever else, I guess. We'll see, won't we? Of course, none of it's wired in really yet. It's all got to be done, and there's a lot of work to do. Hmm. I'll be back. This was the uh, extension of the network from the house. Doesn't look difficult. Just goes through a hole. The only problem is, as you saw earlier, it goes miles. And what's left of the uh, the old studio, just before we get to carpet and underlay and repainting. New lights notice. 
Yeah, all in storage waiting to go. And the dreaded window that we uh, ended up having to put one of these on. The builders, well, didn't know how to do that, it seems. And one or two uh, bars to keep people out. It's got to be touched up with the paint, but yeah, that's one angle. The whole place, as I speak, is, well, <laughs> in turmoil. And that's not all the gear, half of it's still in the house. It's bits everywhere, as you can see. It's just everywhere. For I did complete the rack, as you might be able to see. There we go. All completed as well as completed as matters. And the two network connections work too, which is surprising because I did them. There's Mr. Bruce. There he is. Wandering round. Brucey's, yeah. That's worth putting on. Yeah, uh, opening it up. Oh, it is open. <laughs> forever advertising. Yeah, that looks pretty good. All your craft ale needs. <laughs> Now Alan here moved all these amps over to this part of the room and uh, I did the heavy one of course. Steady Tony. Yeah, there it is. Get two hands on that bench and here it is. Yeah, that's it. What more could anybody ask for except for a Jimi Hendrix picture that's got to go on the wall along with uh, something else, hasn't it? Well, let's not name it. Another one over there as well. Another one what? Oh yeah, you've got a Jimi Hendrix over there, yeah. Yeah, well remembered. And part of a studio that, uh, well, isn't going to be used. 